The billionaire space race is heating up. There are three companies, SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Virgin Galactic leading the way as their ultra-rich bosses pour billions of dollars into the commercialization of space. But SpaceX may have just won the race. It's preparing for its first ever all-civilian mission. Today, I have everything you need to know about the billionaire space race. If you want to be in the know, be sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Hey there, Dave here. You know, there is a good reason that Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Richard Branson are investing so heavily in the space business. The market for space exploration over the next couple of decades is expected to ignite and take off. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. In fact, the commercial space market is expected to increase from 385 billion to at least 1.5 trillion by 2040. That's a pretty big deal. To put it into perspective, the market size in 2040 would account for 5% of the entire U.S. gross domestic product. But where do each of these major private companies stand? Today, I'm gonna to break it all down for you. I'm gonna tell you how each is positioning itself to monetize the emerging space market and to cash in on the big ticket item of sending tourists to space. By the way, which is your favorite? Who do you wanna see win this race? Either the company or the billionaire? Let me know down in the comments. Let's start with SpaceX. It was founded by Elon Musk in 2002. SpaceX has become perhaps the most notable private space company due to a series of historic milestones that span over a decade. Back in 2012, its Dragon spacecraft became the first commercial spacecraft to send cargo to and from the International Space Station. You're initiating the capture of the Dragon. Then in 2020, SpaceX became the first private company to send humans there as well. To date, SpaceX's Falcon 9, which is a reusable rocket designed to transport people and payloads to Earth orbit and beyond. They've already had more than 100 launches and nearly 70 landings. The first time I saw a SpaceX rocket return to Earth, it, it looked like the film was just being rolled in reverse. That must have been so exciting to be the guy playing the video game landing those rockets. And now, SpaceX is planning to send its first all-civilian crew to space. They're doing it with the Dragon capsule. They're planning to do it the fourth quarter of this year. The Dragon is the only spacecraft currently flying that's capable of returning significant amounts of cargo to Earth, and it's the first private spacecraft to take humans to the space station. Getting a seat on the Dragon is actually something anyone can do. I don't know if you saw their commercial during the Super Bowl, but basically you make a donation and you could be selected. I would love to do that. It's not too late to get my donation in, right? Sending civilians to space is just one part of SpaceX's business. Last year, SpaceX was awarded billions of dollars worth of contracts from the U.S. Air Force to launch national security missions for five years starting next year. Blue Origin had also bid on this, but lost out to SpaceX and the United Launch Alliance, which is a joint venture between Boeing and Lockheed Martin. And let's not forget about Starlink, that is SpaceX's satellite-based broadband internet system. It currently has about 10,000 users. Elon Musk says that that service is going to be vital for generating funds to develop the Starship rocket for missions to the moon and Mars. I love that we're living in the Elon Musk era where billionaires can just decide, you know what, I wanna to go to Mars and then actually make it happen. By the way, even though SpaceX is a private company, I actually invested in it through the private market. I have no idea if that's going to ever pay off. Uh, Elon has said that he doesn't expect to IPO Ever. But spin-off companies like Starlink could actually IPO, and maybe there's where I'll make my money. I don't really care. I just wanted to invest in Elon and the future of space. Next up is Virgin Galactic. It is the only one of the three that is publicly traded. It's Richard Branson's company. He is laser focused on commercial human spaceflight for private individuals. And he's banking on the prediction that ultra wealthy individuals will want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to take a spacecation which I would love to do, but I can hardly justify the price of buying a first-class airline ticket, so I don't know, this may not be for me. How is Virgin Galactic making space tourism a reality? They're manufacturing and designing spaceships that can fly private individuals and researchers into space. Its carrier aircraft, the White Knight 2, is designed to carry its spaceship, named Spaceship 2, up to an altitude of about 45,000 feet, where the spaceship is then released. Virgin Galactic says that these reusable space vehicles will eventually allow it to operate like an airline, shuttling people back and forth to Earth. Which sounds fun and all, but... What's it gonna cost you? 
unless you have a net worth of $10 million or more, you're not exactly in their target market. The company says that it expects the majority of its future customers to fall in that wealth bracket or beyond. The spaceflight tickets have historically been sold at a price point of up to $250,000 per ticket, and Virgin Galactic says that they expect the tickets to only get more expensive due to limited capacity and rising demand. The Cohen research firm found that 35% of individuals with a household income of $1 million or more were interested in paying the $250,000 or more for a ticket to space, and about 39% of individuals with a household income of $5 million or more would consider flying to space. I guess that makes paying for a first-class airline ticket sound more reasonable. If you are a patient investor, the upside could extend beyond space. Hypersonic travel is a growth opportunity with massive potential. Virgin Galactic is exploring the high-speed point-to-point opportunity, which Cohen estimates could have a total market of about $1 trillion. Assuming a 20% market share by 2050, Cohen predicts that hypersonic travel could translate to about $200 billion in sales for Virgin Galactic by 2050. And finally, Blue Origin, which Virgin Galactic has said is their primary competitor. The company, founded by Jeff Bezos, was thrust back into the spotlight after news that Bezos is stepping down from his role as CEO of Amazon so that he can focus on other projects like Blue Origin. The expectations for Blue Origin super high as it looks to cash in on several different channels of the space market. Its ambitions include selling suborbital tourist trips to space, heavy lift launch services for satellites, and the development of its lander, the Blue Moon, which will deliver payloads to the lunar surface. The company says that cargo and crew landings will allow for sustained human presence on the moon. Blue Origin's reusable suborbital rocket system called New Shepard is designed to take astronauts to space and will likely be the direct competitor of Virgin Galactic's tourist flights. Back in January, Blue Origin completed their 14th test flight of the New Shepard rocket booster and capsule. The flight reportedly the first of two stable configuration test flights. That's going to clear the way for Blue Origin to send its first crew into space. CNBC is reporting that the company plans to fly passengers in its space tourism rocket as early as April. So far, the results haven't been that significant, but perhaps that all changes now that Bezos is spending less time at Amazon and more time thinking about space. So what do you think about these three space companies or about these three billionaires? Who do you think is going to win the billionaire space race? Or has Elon already won it? <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. And that is the latest from here. If you made it to the end and have not yet hit the like button, take a second, turn the thumb blue, blue origin the thumb. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. My name's Dave Hansen. I hope to see you back there for the very next Hey There, Dave here.